whatever. And it's like pulling teeth. Oh, I know. You know I'm not trying to murder you. I just would like to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They act like it's on an as need to know basis. Oh, he only gives the information. Oh, we're so. good. We're good. We're okay. Oh, really? We'll yeah. call the um, meeting. Um, uh, Needle City Council to order. Roll call. Council Member Campbell. Present. McCorkle. Here. Jernigan. Here. Poe. Here. Belt. Here. Long break. Here. Thank you. Recess the City Council meeting and convene a joint council MPUA meeting. We already did the call to order. Um, public comments pertaining to the executive session items. A three minute time limit per person has been established. Uh, no, no one's here. Okay, we'll close um, public comment. We uh, recess to executive session A NPUA Council Conference with Legal Counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956D4, uh, uh, one case. Council Conference with Legal Counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956D4, one case. Council conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 549568 property 801 3rd Street Needles, California agency negotiator city manager Rick Daniels or his dis designee negotiating party city of Needles as potential lessor and the tri-state Alano club as potential lessee under negotiation price and terms. Meeting will come to order. <laughs> Executive session report by city attorney. Yes, the. The council met in closed session. Item A was conference with legal counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4. One case, there was no reportable action taken. Item number two, conference with legal counsel regarding potential initiation of litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D4, one case, no reportable action. And item C, conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 54956.8, the property at 801 3rd Street, Needles, California, agency negotiator, city manager Rick Daniels or his designee. The negotiating parties are the city of Needles as potential lessor. And the Tri-State Alano Club is a potential lessee under negotiation where price and terms. There is no reportable action taken in closed session. And that concludes the report out. Thank you. During the joint in NPUA council meeting and reconvene the council meeting. Roll call was previously taken. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. We thank you for our city. We thank you for our elected officials, the businesses, the churches, the families, and the individuals that make our city the great place that it is. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, for the roll call, um, Kirsten Merritt was um, excused. Um, approval of agenda. I move to approve. A second. Roll call. I mean, call for the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. McCorko? Yes. Pogue? Yes. Belt? Yes. Longbreak? Yes. Conflict of interest? Do you have any? No. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Councilmember Pogue did have a conflict with executive session item number A. So she recused herself uh, due to the fact that the friend works in the campus. Thank you. Correspondence? None. Okay. Introductions. We have prior council person um, Tim Terrell in our audience. Um, I'd like to welcome um, Dr. Mary McNeil and our new superintendent, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for coming. Uh, city attorney parliamentary procedures. Yes, under the rules of procedure adopted by the council, the mayor or presiding officer is responsible for the maintenance of order and decorum at all times. No person should be allowed to speak who has 
not first been recognized by the chair. All questions and remarks should be addressed to the chair. A council member once recognized shall not be interrupted while speaking unless called to order by the presiding officer. No member should be allowed to speak more than once upon any one subject until every other member choosing to speak thereon shall have been shall have spoken. Public members attending council meetings shall observe the same rules of order and decorum applicable to the council. And as a reminder, there is a three minute time limit for members of the public to make public comments. Um, also, I understand that uh, some of the council members are going to the ICSC conference. And so I just wanted to remind the council that um, during the time that they're at that conference, they are still required to comply with the Brown Act. Um, and we've got some relatively newer council members that may not have gone to a conference like that before. So I just wanted to remind you that um, under the Brown Act, when you're at the conference, um, there, there is an express exception in the Brown Act that allows the council to attend conferences. So, for example, every year the League of California Cities puts on a conference and the Brown Act recognizes that there are these type of events that council members go to. There might be a ribbon cutting in town that the Brown Act recognizes the council can go to. But when you go to those events, if a quorum of the council is together, they cannot discuss city business. So, you know, um, you're allowed to go to the conference, but you can't go off and sit at a table and talk about what's going on in the city. Um, if there are meetings that are arranged, my recommendation would be to have less than a quorum at those meetings. So, for example, let's say you're meeting with somebody that wants to come to Needles and develop housing or retail uh, projects here in town. Uh, my recommendation is that you have maybe a couple people from the council attend that meeting at a time. Don't have, I understand there's five people going, don't have five people sitting in that meeting because that would be an item that would be in the subject matter jurisdiction of the council and therefore would be inappropriate for a majority of the council to discuss outside of a regularly noticed public meeting. Okay, thank you. Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. I might chime in and, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but that if you violate that, that could disqualify you from voting on the matter if it ever came up. So it's a it's a very serious Here. issue. Thank you. Thank you. As a courtesy to those in the in attendance, we would ask that all cell phones be turned off or set in their silent mode. Thank you. Public appearance. Persons wishing to address the city council on subjects other than those scheduled are requested to do so at this time. When called by the mayor, please announce your name and address for the record. In order to conduct a timely meeting, a three-minute time limit per person has been established by Municipal Code Section 2-18. Amendments to the California Government Section 54950 prohibits the City Council from taking action on a specific item until it appears on the agenda. Do we have any? Oh, Dr. Mary. Dr. Mary McNeil, 1201 Safari Lane, Needles, California. I just want to say thank you to the City of Needles. A couple of times we've had um, water issues at the edge of, you know, our property and the street. And I've lived in many other cities and I've never seen anyone come out so quickly and take care of it and communicate what's going on. And it just really warms my heart. And that's why I choose to live. So thank I just you. want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? If not, public comments will be closed. Presentation, a 10 minute uh, time limit per presentation has been established per Municipal Code Section 2-18. The Needles High School Advisory Class will, will be given a PowerPoint presentation on homelessness as it pertains to the City of Needles. Uh, hello, I'm Daniela Harder. I'm a senior here at Needles High School. Hi, my name is Erin Griffin. I'm a sophomore at Needles High School. 
I'm Adrian Eastman. I'm also a sophomore at Eagles High School. Hi, I'm Daniela, and I'm also a sophomore from Eagles High School. Whoever is speaking needs to speak into this so we can make sure we so the audience but got you, it. You don't have to do it. So, but when you're doing your part. Okay, got it. So I need to move. Dr. Cameron, did you want to? Uh... Okay, so um, hello, I'm Daniela Harder. I'm a senior at Needles High School. Oh, we don't have to do that again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, first time hard. I'm not yeah. even the first person. Yeah. confusion. We have two Daniela's here. <laughs> So the problem with neat with overall is due to inflation, the substance abuse and inaccessible living essentials, homelessness rates have drastically increased in the San Bernardino County and the state of California as a whole. Mm -hmm. Our current reality is that we currently have no we don't have as much non-affordable housing as we would like to have. Um, inflation has drastically affected this, and I'm sure everyone has been affected by inflation in the past two or three years, especially after COVID hit. We also don't have a lot of in we don't have a lot of accessible advertisement for the opportunities that citizens in needles might need or want access to, such as job opportunities or rehab facilities that they might need. Um, this chart that I have shows how in the past couple of years, inflation has skyrocketed and caused everything from the price of the housing market or, um, excuse me, just the housing market to go up. And you can see that San Bernardino County is at the bottom, which is the green line but it still is higher considering that we are kind of small and San Bernardino County is a big county. I understand that it's the largest county, but inflation is still affecting everybody and it's not something that we should overlook. So, so uh, some solutions we have come up with are work study programs. I know we have some already here in Needles and the surrounding areas, but making those more accessible to everyone. Uh, local homeless shelters, it's at my knowledge right now that the closest one is too far away for any Needles residents or Needles homeless people to get to. Mental health facilities, low income housing and repurposing buildings, relocating um, the current food drives we have and more in-person advertisements. So some strengths that our group has looked at for the things that the County of San Bernardino has for us is the food drives that we do run. The St. Vincent de Paul's does run food drives for the people who need it and they do it every so often. I'm not sure how often they do it, but I know they do have some. And then a lot of churches also do food drives every now and then for the people that need it. And then we have lots of buildings that may not be new, but they're repurposable and we can turn them into new things, which is going to make it more job friendly for people who need the jobs and more income for the city of Needles. Some weaknesses that we have is that there are no homeless shelters. The closest one is all the way in Bullhead, which is about a two hour walk from here. And for someone who doesn't have their health might not be very good. That walk in the heat of Arizona or California can be deadly and they may not make it. So I think that if we had one closer, it would be a lot nicer. And then the non-accessible advertisement, everything is online. Technology is very much so our future, but the people who are in the lower classes aren't going to have the accessibility that they need to the advertisements to get to the things that they need, like job accessibility, food drives that are being ran, and places they can go for help. So as we've mentioned earlier, inflation is a huge issue when it comes to tackling um, the, inca the income gap between middle, low, and upper um, incomes. So an increase in inflation basically means we have an increase in all costs of, for all goods, whether they're accessible or needed every single day of your life or just simply wants. And so uh, this is more of a state and countrywide issue when it comes to wages and inflation. But as you see, um, around 20, 2000, 
2021, when COVID was starting to get off of his, our heels, we were starting to open up again. Things like inflation skyrocketed. Our rates were higher than they've been in the last 10, 20 years. So um, before you, you have an average annual cost breakdown of four different states, California, Nevada, Arizona, and New York. We chose New York specifically because they have they had a similar homelessness issue as California does, but they slowly handled it better than we did. As you can see, California has almost double the house cost of any other state. We might have a very lower food cost than most of them, uh, but we are kind of even everywhere else. And food cost is nowhere in comparison to the rate at which our housing is at. So our team has put together two visual representations to show you the difference between the lives led by those without deterrence in their lives and those with deterrence in their lives. This person is leading a great life. This person has access to food, clothing, housing, schooling, and all of the job opportunities he might want, while this person has found themselves running into many obstacles such as marijuana which i understand is almost unavoidable here because of how big the cannabis industry industry is in needles but it still affects a lot of people and it still causes a lot of people to develop addictions and they don't necessarily think that they need help but they end up not getting to the things that they actually need According to the other slide that we just had and we talked about, um, there's people also coming into our schools saying, don't do drugs, don't do alcohol, and many, many substances that are also available in this town. Well, it's also hard for people and also kids not to want to do that because we are surrounded by it. It's everywhere we go. That is also something that is there. Um, but what's in the way is that common obstacles that are people's daily lives are weed, alcohol, and drugs. And the average alcoholic spends roughly around $5,096 per year. And overall, that that's just a lot of money that they could be saving but they can't because they are so addicted to what they're drinking and what they have. So the how change can be enforced and what we're asking for our community to lead to is the food drives. We want to relocate them because we do have them, but they're not as accessible as we could make them. They're very standstill and in one spot, and many people who need them might not be able to get to them. So I think if we were to have them moved to where people need them, like if there's a lower class community that would need the food drives, if we can take them there instead of, you know, making them walk all the way to where they need to go for it. And then low income housing or shelters, we have lots of buildings that aren't being used currently in Needles and will probably turn into something eventually. And we're thinking that we can maybe make a shelter out of at least one of them so that it's available for the people who need it. And then the more in-person advertisements, get things on flyers or on billboards instead of doing everything online and making it so that the people who really need them can get them. In conclusion, if we make food and shelter more accessible to California residents, then we will see a significant decrease in the homelessness rates of California, therefore our town. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? No. no thank you very much. No, we're good. Thank you very much. That was thank really very informative. Yeah. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Just hear me. I'm going up there too. Are you going up there? Join. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Are you the only one who has to do it? Yeah. Thank you.
sideways so sideways Wow. 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 Thank you. Good. You have another picture. Cheese. Cheese. Parmesan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank you public hearing public hearing notice to consider all evidence and testimony for or against approval of amending needles municipal code section 13-33d by adding the placement of stop signs at the intersection of vine street and r street staff report yes madam mayor members of the council we had a request to add uh, stop signs at an intersection. Uh, the protocol for reviewing such requests is we have our traffic engineer take a look at those. He takes a look at speed, volume of traffic, any side obstructions and what have you. Um, they, uh, PKDE engineers uh, did the study on this case and they recommend uh, that there be a stop sign for uh, two legs of the intersection. So uh, the, the predominant street will be kept open flow, but the subsidiary streets will be, uh, there'll be stop signs. Now, I, I have to say, never count for stop signs. Uh, they, they will be used to assign liability. But just because the stop signs there doesn't mean people's going to stop. People stop. <laughs> so, but in this case, uh, if the the traffic engineer determined that stop sign on two legs of that intersection are warranted. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an ordinance, so it will. Um, if you, uh, after public testimony, concur with the traffic engineer, there will be a an ordinance that will come back to you at your next meeting or second reading and adoption, and then it will be in effect 30 days after that. But this is the first step in the, actually the first step was the request. So that concludes my uh, report. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, council questions of staff, anybody? No, I already asked mine. Joanne? Yeah, I have a, I have a question. I mean, the reason the request came, are there like near misses with pedestrians or? I, I was, I was uh, <clears throat> Madam Mayor, uh, Council Pope, I, I was informed by the person requesting that there were multiple near misses. Um, I don't have any traffic accident stats. I think we looked at it and there weren't any, but there were a bunch of near misses. So it's more likely to be between vehicles as opposed to pedestrians. Yes, that's yes, my understanding. Although I don't believe there's sidewalks in that area. There are not. So. Oh. It's a, it was a matter of time. All right, thank you. Um, public comment. Any public comment? If no um, public comment, public comment is closed. Um, uh, council discussion? Any council discussion? I'll move to approve. Okay. Second. Call for roll call. Council Member Campbell? Yes. The court goal? Yes. Hogue? Yes. Bill? Yes. Long break? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Approved for introduction, the ordinance number 661-AC amending section 1333D of the Needles Municipal Code to erect stop signs at the southwest and northeast corners of Vine and R Streets. This is the first reading to post. Recess the City Council meeting and convene a Joint Council Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting, HACN. Uh, Roll, roll call previously taken. HACN Council approve additional positions assumed from the Housing Authority and add Housing Manager and Housing Specialist to the authorized positions list. Madam Mayor, uh, members of the Council, um, the Housing Authority has uh, four employees. And there are two maintenance workers, an executive director, 
and a, um, a another staff person. We're in the process of, and in front of you tonight, is to adopt the job descriptions for those positions that will continue. And then we will advertise, we will uh, advertise and recruit for those positions. We will interview, um, in one case, one incumbent who uh, probably has an interest, but we will also solicit uh, openly. Um, the current um, housing manager has provided her notice of uh, retirement, of returning to retirement. She came out of retirement uh, to took that position. So uh, we will have a new housing manager at the end of this. Now, much like the Needles Public Utility Authority and the Needles Transit Authority, the employees are city employees, but they're paid for by the MPOA or paid for by the, the transit agency. In this case, it'll be city employees, but they'll be paid for by all their costs will be borne by the housing utility funds. So that concludes that. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Questions? When are you, when is this fiscally um, changing? <clears throat> well, we, uh, if the council uh, concurs tonight, then uh, we will have the ads in the paper as soon as we can because we need to have these people in these positions because we need to aggressively pursue housing opportunities for low and moderate income families. Okay. I have a question, Your Honor. Uh, so we, we have two maintenance people on staff now. One of them is already transferred over to city employee, is it? Uh, yes, the, um, the, there there were two positions, two maintenance mm -hmm. work positions, mm -hmm. each 32 hours, because that was their full work. Mm -hmm. So what I did was we kept, and one retired, mm -hmm. so I had a vacancy. So rather than fill that two months ago, we increased that person's hours to 40 hours a week, mm -hmm. and then left the other position vacant until I could get the position into the city. So at your last meeting, you created the maintenance worker position mm -hmm. in the city, which is really, there were two that were created. So um, they will be part of the public works crew, but they will be interchangeable. So if there is a big project, then public works, the rest of the public works crew can go help on that. Or this person could be available during downtime to work on other standard public work stats. Um, but uh, we will have a, another, we will have that vacant position open and I'm working with Jesse to assess the, ne the need and necessity for that second position. Okay. That's sort of be a possibility. Well, well, that's the possibility is that you might fill it or we might need it, you might not need it. You'll we determine it later. Our okay. Mayor, I have a question. Um, so we already have one executive director. Is are they doing the job right now of the housing manager? Or are we adding two new to the four we have? No, um, the uh, there are four now. Uh -huh. There will be four at the end of the day. Okay, so the executive director is that position is going to be going to a housing manager? Well, uh, the yes, the position will. Now, the reason I didn't call it executive director is uh, in the city structure of government, the city manager is the executive director because there's a final say on the personnel budget and what have you. Okay. Um, but I wanted, the, and the person who's currently performing those duties has no interest in continuing. And that's the same with the one staff member? Well, the one staff member, she has a stated her intent to apply for the housing specialist. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we'll go ahead and call for the motion. I'll make a motion that we approve as written. I'll second it. Call for the vote. Council Member Campbell. Yes. McCorkle. Yes. Hogue. Yes. Belt. Yes. Longbreak. Yes. Thank you.
adjourn the Joint Council HAC and Board of Commissioners meeting and reconvene the City Council meeting. Public comments pertaining to the Council items, a three minute time limit per person has been established. The consent calendar, all matters listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed. The mayor or any member of the City Council may pull an item from the consent calendar for discussion. Prior to council action, a member of the public may address the city council on matters scheduled on the consent calendar. A three minute time limit per person applies. Recommended action, approve items four through 10 on the consent calendar by affirmative roll call vote. I would like to pull nine. I wanna talk about the pool. Okay, so then we will, um, Approve items four through um, eight and ten. Yeah, I'll move to approve those four, I'll five, six, it. seven, eight, and ten. Second. Uh, call for the vote. Council Member Campbell. Yes. McCorkle. Yes. Hogue. Yes. Belt. Yes. Long break. Yes. Thank you. Okay, um, number nine is authorized community works design group to conduct a needs as assessment and cost estimate for the Needles Municipal Aquatic Center, not to exceed 7,400, utilizing 5,800 of general fund reserves and 1,600 from the Needles Sand Shark Swim Team. Staff. Staff. Um, this last uh, year, we received a number of complaints, and then when we drained the pool, we found out why. The bottom of the pool looked like Swiss cheese, and that is that um, sections of plaster as big as, a, as big as a plate were missing, and it was plaster, concrete, plaster, and it was all over. So, um, I know, as I heard um, frequently in the evening, that it made it difficult, especially for the water aerobics uh, class. Uh, when we drained the pool, uh, we took a look, we realized we have a bigger problem than we thought. And it's not unusual, it's not damage, it's just wear and tear. Mm -hmm. So um, we do, as you recall, we did submit a grant request yeah. for a pool two to three times size, the size of that. That included all new gymnastics equipment and whatever, and pumps and, and we were unsuccessful, although we got the Duke Watkins funding. Now, that Prop 68 funding, we keep resubmitting that project to see if, as the other projects get funded, maybe it makes room for ours. But uh, we've not been able to do that. So what we've done is we have, basically put a Band-Aid on the pool today. And that is we've replastered those gaps in the bottom of the pool. But we know that the entire pool needs to be replastered. We also know that there are new materials that are being um, used instead of plaster that we want to look at. We also know that the pool mechanical equipment, the filter, pumps, floor inlets, the uh, the, the cutter system and piping, they're all aged and in need of repair repair replacement. We know that the bathrooms need renovation. We know that the concrete coping, which is the, the rounded edge to the pool, that that needs to uh, replace. Uh, and then the 1990 slide is on borrowed time. Mm -hmm. So what we are asking to do here is to have a needs assessment conducted on these topics and anything else that a pool expert identifies. And that will become the scope of work for a grant that we intend to, a second grant, another grant of a smaller scale that we intend to submit to whoever might be interested in providing the funding. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's not just the plaster, which is the immediate problem, but it is, it is a larger view of the pool. So let's go in and fix it right, because we, every 40 years, we get to do this. And 
we are also looking at uh, if we just replaster the pool all next year, that's probably $150,000 to do so. Uh, we want to put a big, bold blue in in the bottom. Mm -hmm. for that's right. So uh, that's a long answer to a short question. No, that's exactly it is where we're going to try to get another set of grant for the second part, because this is good. We know we need to spend that money, but and, and can we get another pay? Also, I mean, we have the plaster work all done. We wanted to let it set and cure for two days. So probably beginning Thursday, we'll be refilling. Oh, and of the of the money that's going to go to this project, um, the Sand Shark Swim Team is donating sixteen hundred dollars towards the cost. Nice. So we want to thank them. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm excited. It's thirty three years in front. <laughs> Don't make us older than I'm we are. Fifty five. That's right. I'm fifty. <laughs> and C C was on the council that gifted this to you. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barbara, public comment. It was a wonderful Mary Barbara Beard. 213 Safari. I just wanted to add that um, back when we were applying for the big grants, and we were having all of our community service meetings all over the city. We had several over by the pool and a lot of people showed up, a lot of citizens. We had participation by all ages of children and they drew on charts and submitted photographs and I took pictures of almost everything. I studied about the pool. Ask questions about the pool. There's a beautiful pool that's very similar to what we have space wise down. I think it was in Yuma. I submitted all that information to Rainey and um, city manager, and we didn't get the grant for the, but I I had requested submitting a grant for a new pool rather than continually. Mm -hmm. We were putting band-aids on back then. One of the complaints that kept coming in, which really concerned me that I'll never forget, is a lot of the young children were getting cuts and bleeding in the water ending up having to have band-aids and whatever else repair work done on their bodies because of the bad shape of all the tiles and asphalt, whatever it was. So, you know, I I would rather we keep, a, you know, aiming high for a new swimming pool. A lot of the swimmers on the team were asking, and I, I had suggested an Olympic size. So we're in competition with all the other big pools around and more people can be drawn to needles for swimming. We have the space for it. We have more space because we also have space over by the animal shelter. I think that still belongs to the city across the street. So we have plenty of room out there if we want to expand the park. But I would just I'd just like to see us keep focusing on a, more money for a, a brand new pool rather than all this money that we put into it. And I think we're still putting it in every year. It's not just this one time because the tiles keep falling apart and the kids keep getting hurt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? If not, public comment will be closed. Um, call for the motion. I'll move to approve. Yeah, I'll second it. Uh, mm -hmm. Call for the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. McCorkle? Yes. Pogue? Yes. Selt? Yes. Long break? Yes. Thank you. End of consent. City Attorney's report. Just briefly, um, some of the matters that we've been working on are we continue to work on the Needles versus River Valley receivership case. Um, we had a hearing uh, last week, I believe, on that matter, and there's going to be another hearing coming up. So we continue to work on that matter for the city. I understand that the receiver was out of the property today. Um, and then also, um, the uh, representing the city on uh, numerous code enforcement cases and receivership cases. We're also actively involved working uh, closely with staff on enforcing the city's um, uh, cannabis tax that was approved by the voters and uh, also assisting staff with Public Records Act requests, um, assisting with public contracting issues and real estate matters um as needed on labor and employment matters um and then also providing advice in connection with the brown act and conflicts of interest and um and then we also uh worked on item two on tonight's agenda and that's my report this evening thank you city clerk's report thank you um on the uh, city code Except for five 
sections of the code out of the 55 sections that are part of our municipal and zoning code, the all been set to muni code. The other five sections I'm working on and modifying them. They got a little possessed when you repaginate and A's turn into B's and one turn into threes. And, <laughs> um, I will advise you when the link will be established okay. from Muni Code. <clears throat> uh, vault, ongoing. Um, we have to identify the documents that should be shredded after the city attorney review. The plan is to, there are some documents in the vault right now that I know can be shredded, mm -hmm. but instead of hauling them back down to City Hall to shred, there is a room, a rather large storeroom behind the rec center, and it has a lot of stuff in it. A lot of stuff that I'm sure 90% of it will be shreddable. So we're going to, once we inventory that and get the city attorney's approval, then we'll have the truck come up here and just haul it away that way the rec center can utilize that space for their needs. Okay. Um, agenda management, we're moving forward. Um, the goal is, and I feel certain that we'll be able to publish the first agenda management agenda on our website, the first meeting in July. Uh, Form 700's conflict of interest. Um, all those who had a file have filed. Uh, there are some, employees at staff employees that haven't completed their AB 1234 training and um, we're scheduling a sexual harassment training so I'll review on who's taken it I think we won't have a quorum issue because I think all five yeah. of you probably took it early we this did. year okay. so um, that's great uh, and um, the city attorney's office will be providing that training okay um Records request ongoing. Um, more and more meetings are via Zoom and Teams, especially when council belongs to various council committees like the Mojave Desert Air Quality and the SBCTA. So um, uh, Candace has been setting up the Zoom and Teams meetings so that those members can participate from here and not have to drive yeah. four hours. And um, basically, we're just continuing support with the uh, planning department with their agenda packet preparation, et cetera. Thank you. City manager. Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, I can report tonight that we have two wells in operation. Either one can meet the needs of the city's water supply. Excellent. And that's the first time in a number of years we've been able to say that. Well, 15 went online last week. Um, it is, um, we're primarily using that right now. Uh, it is producing 2,200 gallons per minute times 24 times 60 minutes. Um, the, we're going to let that, excuse me, we're going to let that run for a couple of weeks and then uh, we're going to take uh, well, 11, we won't be using that for a while while we begin the demolition and the construction of the new water treatment plant at the well 11 site. Um, expect a groundbreaking on May 24th or thereabouts. Um, the underpass, I have been assured that will be under construction before the end of the month. <laughs> Um, I mentioned uh, the pool, um, the RFP, the request for proposals for construction of the parks projects, the improvements at Jack Smith, the Duke Watkins, what hasn't been done, and the um, uh, the new Marina Park, uh, Bob Bell Beaches Park. Um, those are all out to bid. And our goal is to bring the award of that bid to council at your first meeting in June. So there's three new groundbreakings. Um, I was notified today that um, the sponsors of the Back the Blue Caravan is occurring again this year. Uh, last year, they looped through needles. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether their plans are to do the same, but on 
May 20th, Saturday, May 20th, uh, there's a caravan that, that rides through the area to uh, back police officers and law enforcement officials. Um, I also, um, it's too bad the, the students weren't here, but I, I met last week, or excuse me, about a week ago, Mayor Patrick and I attended a, uh, a meeting that the County Board of Supervisors held with all of their departments involved in homelessness. So adult protective services, child protective services, behavioral health, health, sheriffs, fire, uh, all of those organizations. And with mayors of a number of cities, Ontario, uh, San Bernardino, uh, Chino, Needles, uh, and others. And the, the county has quantified that there are 4,195 homeless people in the county. Now, I don't know what the population is, but 3 million, 4 million. But the number is up 22 to 26 percent. Now, of those 4,195, mm -hmm. they estimate that there's 27 that are without shelter tonight. So the county has committed to $72.7 million to expand the capacity of Facilities for homeless. Now, those facilities come in three different types. There's urgent, and that is get somebody a place inside. The Off the street. There is temporary, that is uh, both parents or one parent or whatever lost their job, they lost their place, they need someone to get some place to stay for maybe up to 30 days and transition. transition. And then there's longer term. And those are people who are without a place that also have other hurdles, difficulties, mm -hmm. some of the difficulties that were mentioned a little bit ago, that need job training, might need um, uh, drug and alcohol treatment and whatever. So there's three different types. So the mayor suggested that we have two organizations, three organizations provide services to the homeless right now. Um, St. Vincent's in their food bank and clothes. Uh, plus they have other assistance that is also available. The other is Firehouse Ministries, which has a, a, a home that they provide shelter for. They also provide food bank services and then also we have Set Free Church that provides services to the homeless, either shelter or food, uh, showers, a number of different services. So the suggestion that was made by the mayor that I followed up on is to meet with those parties and to find out, because the official census of homeless people in needles is nine. And so we ask the question to those three, what could you do to help provide service to, services to make sure those nine are covered? So I received uh, three proposals. One was <laughs> a proposal to add a modular home to a lot down by the firehouse Ministries Church, uh, at which they could provide services to up to seven uh, people in a, in a care home. Um, the other one I received also from Firehouse was a proposal to build a <clears throat> to convert an existing building on Front Street to a food bank and uh, beds uh, that could serve twenty to thirty people. Um, the cost estimate on that, and these are guesstimates, early, early guesstimates, was 1.5 million. Per year? 
The third request yeah. that we talked about was um, that set free could take an existing building they have at their property, move their food bank to another area of their property, and divide that into a men's section and a women's section. And it has showers and bathrooms. But uh, and that estimate was probably 150,000. So what I left them with is both firehouse and set free are elaborating on their concepts. We will put that in a grant that the county is going to hand out $72.7 million. And we would put those as a submission of a public private partnership with the city and those private nonprofits uh, to add an additional number of beds, because that's what the county's after is capacity. So the rules won't be uh, the application and the rules or their decision criteria won't be available for about another two weeks. So we'll take the concepts that they're developing and flush them out. I'll put our grant maven to work on fashioning that into a, a, a good grant application and we'll make the pitch to the county for a portion of that. Now, one of the key factors is that the the grant the projects need to be shovel ready because the county had a 4.4 million dollar grant for home to address homelessness that they had to return because they couldn't meet the deadlines for their, their the project they had in mind oh, and so opportunity so we want to make sure that we submit things that can be turned on and operational in a relatively short period of time as quickly as possible. So uh, I just wanted to give you an update on, on that. And I provided an article that was um, recent, which kind of summarizes um, mm -hmm. the, the county program. The last thing I want to report on is um, you approved tonight sending a letter to the legislature to say act on the fentanyl poisoning crisis that's going on in this country. And because they had a, a dozen bills that had been filed to try and address it, but they weren't moving. Right. There, there was no action being taken. Well, already the League of California Cities uh, sent out a flyer that said, the two bills have received action already since yesterday. And one is to increase the fine on dealers for establishing a task force to address the fentanyl uh, addiction and overdoses. And the other was to put fentanyl in the same category of controlled substances as heroin mm -hmm. exists today. Mm -hmm. So it is not an accepted medicinal use the way it is being in today. So it stiffens the fines, stiffens the penalties, puts, uh, encourages law enforcement to be proactive and gives them the tools to do so. Now, like all legislation, it probably doesn't go far enough, but this is already the legislature heard that you were considering it and changed their point. But no, this we become, one of a number of cities that are encouraging the legislature to take action on this. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Council Member Campbell. Hi. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, let's see. I have, okay. Um, the California Street underpass has been graffitied again. There's like six pieces of beautiful artwork that someone put up there that not really very beautiful. <laughs> it's nicer than I could have done. And I just wanted to report that out. And I would like to um, start a conversation. I know you're super busy, but um, do it to do the art for the electric boxes. And maybe we can talk about doing artwork on the underpass walls, doing um, murals, because people tend to not graffiti other people's artwork, which is why we did the, we're doing the graffiti wall for the kids at the park. 
Um, and we have the underpass underneath, you know, the railroad for the kids do every year. And it's very rare that we get someone that graffiti sure. that up. They mm -hmm. kind of have a respect for other people's artwork. So if we did something like, you know, and it could be part of an art walk, like they have in Elko and other places where the, the our beautiful murals that we already have and an art art walk with murals underneath that walkway would be something um, for the tourism to have with you know, an art walk. Um, I participate in that in Elko every year when I go to Cowboy Poetry Gathering, and it's really beautiful, and it talks about the artwork, why, and the artists. So maybe we could do something with murals under there and stop these um, little two people that seem to be lying to graffiti on that underpass. Nothing obscene, thank you, this time, but, you know, it's there. Um, then, um, okay, Eagle, okay, I, I had reason to be on Eagle Pass a whole bunch of times recently, emptying out my final storage, thank God, of all my files for 30, uh, 40 years of legal files. And the potholes on the asphalt on Eagle Pass are really bad. So maybe we could, uh, I don't know where our, where we begin and end or who owns the street, but if we own any part of it, maybe we could do something about that. Because my Highlander didn't like that street at all, just saying. Um, I wanna thank the mayor, uh, the mayor for her work on this. This new um, thoughts with the um, homelessness and thoughts on how it can be handled and what the solutions are, because it's really wonderful to see our community coming together on this. And thank you very much for the time and effort putting into this and our staff that went to meet with the county, because this is a that's one of the things we lobbied for up in Sacramento when we went for the leadership. But people were up there lobbying for the funds. Um, which were going to be drastically cut. And we asked that you're going to cut them. Okay, we understand cutting because it has to be cut, but please don't take away what we already have because mm -hmm. it's such a huge problem. Um, and so um, they they seem to be listening to the people, which is really nice. Little tiny steps make um, big works in the end. Um, I want to thank code enforcement for um, a lot of things that they've been having to deal with, with, you know, big projects, you know, things and you know, some newer things that just cropped up this week, which were heinous. They're just, and it's going to be a bigger problem. But thank you for dealing with that. I really do appreciate it because code enforcement going out and, and attacking these you know, places where people move and abandon stuff on three, four sides of their house and onto the street and into the driveways. It's really unsightly. Mm -hmm. And it's a, and it's an attractive nuisance for people to come and know the place is empty, break into it and possibly burn places down. So we don't want to have that. And I want to thank you very much for hopping on, on top of that. And I, I'm going to throw Rick under the bus. Rick used to do this nice little newspaper article once in a while, telling all about the wonderful things the city is doing. I would really like to see Rick's face we're not going to get to see that for a whole lot. Oh, you know, leave us soon. But Patrick, do it. So Patrick, do it. telling the city, you know, you can do it or the mayor can do it. Where we have a, in the paper telling our community all of the good things that we do. Better. Because, you know, they don't always come here to hear about it. And we get people that don't know what's happening. And we do a lot of good things. You do a lot of good things. And we vote on things, but you do the good things. So we'd like the city to know about that. We'd like our, our people to know. And um, and that's all I have. Uh, thank you. Council Member McCorkle. Uh, I have no bus to run over Rick with today, <laughs> but... <laughs> or Patrick or the mayor. <laughs> um, no, no, kidding. <laughs> um, no, I really just want to send out a kudos to the city and um, the city manager and everybody else who worked on that well issue that we had. Yeah. You know, I want to say most people probably didn't know we even had an issue, which is thank everything oh, wow. involved that um, it didn't get there and that fast and that, you know, the well was brought up online and there was no dis um, disruption in the water service to us. You know, everyone was up all night with that one. So, and then bright eyed and bushy tailed the next day to meet our representative state representative um, people. Um, also, I wish the students were still here. They had that was an amazing uh, presentation that they did. Um, I love seeing the younger people come in and I hope like everyone encourages them to come in in front of city council because we're not here just for the adults who voted us in, but we're also here to preserve and protect needles for them. They are the future. They're the ones that are going to be sitting up here later. So I think their concerns, their views are just as, as important as everybody else's. Um, so if anyone knows them, sees them around, you know, tell them we said, you know, they did an amazing job and or welcome back anytime with any of their issues. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. 
Um, Council Member Pope. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, um, I attended the um, Chamber of Commerce breakfast at the Chilling Point, and our state assemblymen and senator representatives were there. The the council or the uh, politicians themselves weren't. Then we followed them to El Garces for another <laughs> meeting, and and it we had a nice discussion. You know, we were we were encouraged to talk about our big issues, and of course, housing seems to be the big problem, and being able to get housing built because of the differences in the requirements for California and um, Arizona. I suggested reciprocity, maybe take a look at some of these laws and regulations that they're creating in Sacramento and excuse the border cities from some of these requirements. Um, we're not the only one that's losing business to the other states, uh, Yuma, and I'm sure Nevada border towns. So. They they thought that was a good idea. We'll see what happens after with that. But um, it was a nice nice discussion we had. They loved needles. They loved El Garces. I guess they went on the tour afterwards. So, and uh, I'd like to echo the comments about the high school students. I would encourage them to come to the meetings, just to come to the meetings and see how things work and get them interested in the government. So, but they did a great job. Really really impressed with them. They did their work. That's all I have. Thank you. Council Member Bell. Um, yeah, I mean, echoing on that, why we should have a junior council member we talked about with the city, with the school, so that they could actually come and actually do some um, participating in our actual meeting. Um, a couple of things we got to rent the um, Duke Watkins Park the last couple weekends ago. And for a birthday party, it, it was amazing. We have great parks here in town. We were able to get a water slide up. We had used the park. The cover was great. The park, the equipment, all the equipment was used by, I don't know, 20 little eight and nine-year-olds running around. Mm -hmm. So um, really appreciate all the hard work everybody's putting into these parks. It's so nice to be able to use our parks to go out there and have, I mean, just everything we had power we had water we had shade everything you could need to use your park and be able to actually have a party and say you know this is our town and i, I wish the only thing i didn't take was a picture dang it i was so busy <laughs> having the party and i never took a picture not even one like just one picture i took and that was it such a bad mom so <laughs> second thing um i want to dance tracks put on a nice show this weekend for the girls we don't give that enough credit we have a great grace Gracie puts on a great show for those girls. We had, they probably had, I mean, I don't know, 50 kids participate in that um, dance tracks. And it's amazing. They use our building over here on the side. And I mean, it's just a beautiful show. Some of these um, girls are part of the show, the um, high school students. And it just really is a, a great program that we have. And glad that the city gets to participate and help them continue to run that. Um, this Wednesday is May 17th, the run for the wall. So just to remind people, one to three, right out there at El Garza. So just a little push for that also to come out, see the the bikers and on their way out to uh, D.C. Um, we still need our goal setting event. We still haven't set that. Um, I'd like to get that officially set up along with the visitor center meeting so we can continue on those tracks. And that's about it. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Longbreak. Uh, yeah, I want to add to the dance track there. Uh, my granddaughter has two national champions uh, championships uh, through going through dance tracks, and she got a scholarship to San Bernardino University, a four-year scholarship for dance. So Gracie does a wonderful job there, and that place is really awesome. And uh, also, I want to uh, uh, the train, our train uh, uh, park. Trains look beautiful. They look great. Great job on it. Great paint job on that. Looks really good. And um, on Coronado and Aaron Street, it's actually on Coronado. There's there's some dips there in the road as you go from Aaron to Coronado. There's some dips and it's kind of kind of dangerous there if you if you're not watching out what you're doing. Um, and there's another thing I would like to uh, put on the uh, um, if if we can put on the uh, on the agenda would be uh, amending uh, Charter 503. Uh, that would encourage more 
residents to step up and uh, realize that being a, being on council it is a full time job. You know, we do do a lot of work up here, and the mayor does too. Uh, there's other cities that uh, that make, uh, you know, Palm Springs, for example, or they make forty one thousand dollars a year for each council member. I mean, I'm not asking to make that much by all means. I don't think anybody should make that much in deals for council. Um, uh, Rancho Mirage is thirty one thousand dollars a year. Uh, Indian Wells is a uh, thousand and thirty nine dollars a year uh, per month. Uh, uh, that's a stipend for uh, for council members there. And I would just like to uh, request that we would uh, we would get that on an agenda. Ours is what? I want we get one dollar per month. Twelve a year. Twelve dollars a year. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, it's an old it's a it's an old charter, I believe, and uh, I believe it needs to be amended. That's no. all I got. Thank you. Yeah, it would have to it would have to go to the voters, and that's correct. It's one dollar per month under Section five hundred three of the charter, um, and that affects everybody, mayor and council members. So it would if the council were interested in it, we'd have to agendize it, and then and then um, you'd have to. Vote mm -hmm. put it on the ballot. That's how you do it. <clears throat> but I'm pretty sure it's below minimum wage. But I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Skelter. <laughs> That's okay. it. I, I recently attended the Needles Prayer um, Day they had a couple of Saturdays ago. It was a great event in the Santa Fe Park. It was a day of prayer and great music. They had a really, a really good turnout. And I, th and I thank um, Terry King for hosting that for us. And this past Saturday, I did attend the educator breakfast, and um, our needles teacher, uh, Stacy Martinez, was one of the nominees. So I just want to congratulate Stacy Martinez for that. And um, at the breakfast, I um, sat with Supervisor Hildy Angus and the Bullhead City Mayor Steve um, Demaco, and I did invite them down for a uh, run for the wall, and they are going to plan on attending that. And that is the 50th anniversary of of Vietnam War. So it's yeah, it's something meaningful for um, Run for the Wall this year. And um, last week, um, city manager and Patrick and I, we attended SCAG. It was really great um, getting to visit with uh, companies, especially homeowner companies who were not really savvy on needles um, and gave me a list of reasons why. And um, and it was also really good to speak with other cities, listening to their concerns. And what the last meeting that uh, Patrick and I attended, um, the uh, representatives of the contractors for California and the homeowners association, um, housing association, um, we were kind of shocked at this figure. There were 150,000 contractors that left California. Mm -hmm. This industry needs 2.1 million jobs in the next three to five years. So. And then Patrick has spoke to other cities that were, you know, well above us that were having a hard time getting contractors. So Needles isn't the only one. They really aren't. And housing was a critical topic, you know, pretty much through the whole um, SCAG convention. So other cities and state of California realizes they have to address this issue. Middle class homes are the critical um, part that we need. And we do as well here in Needles. But Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And meeting adjourned. Yeah, she's she's badass. If you need to be. <laughs>